Good evening and welcome to our fifth Lent, midweek uh, Lenten service. The meal proceeding, if you weren't here for that, you'd miss something. At the bar we said hi, but the fellowship groups came through and, it, and I don't know, seemed to me it surpassed the others. They were all good, but it, this one was really especially good. And thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, well, let's begin our service. God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. Let us rise. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. We serve in the Spirit of Christ. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. We serve in the Spirit of Christ. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was born in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant. We serve in the Spirit of Christ. Whoever would be great among you must be made your servant. We serve in the Spirit of Christ. Whoever would be first among, um, among you must be slave of all. We serve in the Spirit of Christ. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. The scriptures sum up God's law, his demands upon us, in these two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
But these commands we fall short to keep, or we, we fail to keep. Our love for God is far from full, and our love for others is incomplete. We seek to serve ourselves rather than to serve God and others. Thus we acknowledge our sin and seek God's mercy. God of love, you love us with perfect love, but you also demand that we love you and others perfectly. This we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as yourself. You would be perfectly just to punish us now for the sake of your son, the suffering servant of Jesus Christ. Mercy on us. Forgive us our self-serving ways. Lead us to serve you. We cry to you for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Lord, as we continue our Lenten pilgrimage, we do so in view of your mercy. We thank you for sending Jesus to be the suffering servant who gave his life so that we might live eternally. In view of your mercy, remake us into willing servants who live to serve you and others. Sanctify us by your spirit to humbly serve the needs of those around us as we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray these things in his holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens, ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn to, for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has, he has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness? and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not so unjust as to overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I, what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you, if you do them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You sit for the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and his disciples celebrated the Passover. The Passover meal was important as it was a way to remember and celebrate God's deliverance of his people from Egypt. A big part of the Passover was being ceremonially clean. More on that in a moment. After the disciples had reclined around the table, Jesus, as host, pronounced the thanksgiving, or blessing over the wine and the feast, drinking the first cup himself. It was at this point, when the meal had not yet started, that hand and foot washing was usually performed. Even if a guest had bathed before attending a dinner, his feet would be dirty from the dust of the streets and the fields. After all, Uber and Lyft weren't quite there yet. The humblest of slaves had to do the job of washing the feet of the guests. It was dirty work. It was humbling work. It was the kind of work no one really wanted to do. When he was about to begin the meal proper, Jesus poured water into the basin that was commonly used for that purpose, and then began to wash the feet of his disciples and to dry them with a towel tied around his waist. Christ did not institute a new sacrament at this time. Only St. John mentions this foot washing. The sacrament was instituted with the third cup. There are churches in which the washing of the feet is practiced as a, as a rite. For example, every Holy Thursday, the Roman Pope publicly washes the feet of the homeless from the streets of Rome. In the same way, some bishops usually wash the feet of the subordinate priests during Holy Week. But it's better to understand the washing of the disciples' feet by Jesus as an act that symbolizes the mutual forgiveness with which Christians forgive each other before participating in the sacrament. In our church, we express this forgiveness to each other with the sharing of peace. This is not simply a greeting, but is used to show that we are at peace with our fellow believers before the sacrament. This is also meant to show that Christ came to serve and not to be served as he continues to serve his people. We come to church and to the altar of our Lord not to serve God but for a lot to allow him to serve us. Well, how do we understand the dialogue between Jesus and Peter? Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you will have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, he who, has not, who, he who has been washed needs only to wash his feet, because he is all clean, and you are clean, although not all. Jesus humbled himself for all the work of salvation. He was baptized in the Jordan River, even though he had no sins to repent of. He died on the cross as the lamb without blemish. Therefore, we must recognize that he is teaching the necessity of baptism for all of his followers when he says, if I do not wash you, you will have no part with me. In baptism, Jesus washes us from our sins, even original sin. Simon Peter did not understand that, so he told him not only my feet, but my hands and my head. In baptism, it is a spiritual regeneration, the beginning of new life in Christ. A person should not be baptized again because in this sacrament, the Holy Spirit gives eternal life forever. Only he whom Christ washes and cleanses from sins can have a part with Christ. This great benefit and blessing of the Lord and cleansing of sins was not fully realized or appreciated by the disciples until after Pentecost. Peter first objected, then immediately became overzealous and violently anxious, wanting to have more than his fair share in the service of the Lord. We are all saints of God through baptism. 
However, sinful human nature lasts until physical death. So we are still sinners until the work of sanctification is accomplished in our resurrection. What needs to be done in regard to sins committed after baptism is to frequently receive the sacrament, to repent of our sins, and to approach the table of our Lord. This is the sacrament that can be repeated. In baptism, the believer enters into communion with Christ once for all, because Christ's sacrifice on the cross was once for all time. In the, world, the Lord's Supper, the believer celebrates this communion with Christ and with the, uh, with the brothers in the faith. The word liturgy. Liturgy is a Greek word that means a public service organized and provided by a benefactor or advocate for the benefit of all. The liturgy is equal to the divine service, which is organized by God, not for his own benefit, but for our benefit. The benefits are the word and the sacraments for us. We respond with our requests, our thanksgiving, and our praise, but these are responses. The first move is from God. This is God's service to us. This is the communion of saints in which there is brotherhood. Our Lord humbled himself to offer us this communion. None of us deserve this gift, but all receive it equally. Therefore, our Lord asks us, For if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you must also wash one another's feet. Before receiving the sacrament, it is important to examine our consciences, repent of our sins, and confess our sins before, against God. And also especially on this night, when the Lord instituted the sacrament before he was handed over to the cross, it is important to obtain forgiveness for those against whom he has sinned, against whom we have sinned, and for us to forgive others. In this communion, we find the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Almighty and merciful God, we approach your throne of grace today as your servants. Lord, Lord have mercy. You call us to serve you by serving others, so guide us to re recognize those who you send to us to serve. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to serve one another as you have served us, so empower us to follow the example of Jesus who washed feet. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Give us insight to perceive the needs of others and to respond by serving the cares of body and soul. Lord, Lord have mercy. Give us humility to count others more important than ourselves and to attend to their needs above our own. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Give us compassion to see others in distress and then to aid and assist. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In view of your mercy, Move us by your spirit to give mercy to others, and so extend your mercy in the world. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Lord, Lord grant me your grace, grace both to will and to do. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for, for us all. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
May the merciful God who is faithful to forgive your, your self-serving sin direct you to serve others in his name and through his power, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And we close with uh, the hymn, Rise, Shine, You People. later in your bulletin, which next Sunday, of course, is, is Palm Sunday. We are going to have a procession. It's going to be chilly, so dress appropriately, but uh, we'll be ready for it. Uh, Holy Week next week, lots of services. Easter egg hunt after second service this Sunday. Easter egg hunt after second service next Sunday. This Sunday. Is that, this Sunday. Is that everybody? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all. God bless you.